Hello, good evening, and welcome back. Let's take a break from America and go back domestically. Ever feel like you're being watched? A fascinating graphics reveal how London's whopping 627,707 CCTV cameras and IP surveillance compare with other cities around the world. And let's be honest, it's probably a few higher by now. And cameras per capita makes it the third most dense in the world. The 13 other places in the top 14 are all in China. And I don't think you really want to be in a group which is solely comprised of China when it comes to government intervention. And just to make matters worse, new intelligence law allows children to work as secret agents for local councils, anti-fraud bodies, and even a gambling watchdog, and even shop their own parents, including health and safety standards. Yes, yeah, so they say children, but from what I can see, it's 16 and 17 year olds, not under 16s, for the most part, apparently. So yeah, that's where we stand now. But let's just let's just go into it uh, to give you some more context here. So London is third most monitored state in the world, with only Shanghai and Beijing having more cameras. New York City has the highest number and density of CCTV cameras in the US. Chennai in India has the highest density of cameras in the world, with a staggering 657 monitors per square kilometer monitoring its citizens. And if you go through the table, which it does show here, um, cameras per 100 1,000 people, and it also shows the crime index, that you can see comparing these two columns on the right, that they don't really correlate with each other. It seems that you can have more cameras or fewer cameras, and yet the crime index doesn't really seem to change much. There is a very, very loose correlation of fewer cameras meaning more crime, but as I say, it is very loose. It's, it's not really that reliable. So it would seem similar to the gun argument, really, that you know you would have thought more surveillance means safer place because people are being watched all the time. So they're not going to do anything wrong. And fewer guns means safer citizenry because nobody has guns. But of course, that doesn't really quite work because what mattered more is the attitudes of the individuals within those places. What matters much more is the education. And no, I don't mean state-controlled syllabi about what people are taught in school and, you know, keeping up to <laughs> up in terms with the curriculum and maths and English and science. I don't mean that at all. I mean cultural education. I mean human education, human development, character development. That is what matters significantly more so. And I think we can all agree that that is what is lacking when it comes down to crime. That crime, being illegal, is illegal because it is immoral. Coming back from the Ten Commandments, which were describing the way of life and um, how to have a successful community or society. And therefore, it's illegal because it's immoral. And people who do understand consequences and the meaningful of everybody around them are significantly less likely to commit crime. I'm not saying that they won't, you know, attack people, but more often than not, that would be out of self-defense and provoked and therefore not crime. And there might be some instances where they have to break the rules in order to do something for the moral good because the laws haven't quite kept up, in which case that's fair enough. That laws are not necessarily Mogul. Anymore. And that's the issue that we're facing. It seems to be that we've lost our way in trying to change things around. From originally, it being, well, here's the morality and let's put the law around it. Fair enough. It's kind of just helping people to discern what it is that they've already been doing. But now we've lost that and instead they're trying to dictate morality through law. And that never works. But it gets worse, because <laughs> it's not just, of course, the statement of law, but it is through fear. And that is how it is being run. Of course, Machiavelli said it is better to be feared than loved, if you can't have both. If. And that seems to be really taken to heart. But the thing is, and must be remembered, when it comes to surveillance is that it does not prevent crime. It does not stop it in the act. It is there for after the fact, 
and hopefully pieces can be put together and investigations can be carried out in order to bring the perpetrator to justice. But it does not stop it in the moment. And that is why it is a largely fruitless endeavor. Because would you believe it, most people committing a crime aren't thinking that they're going to be caught. They're really not. And I'm sure you've seen elaborate um, murder plans, for example, because somebody doesn't want to get caught. And therefore, they think that they're not going to get caught. So having those cameras up, well, they'll just factor that in, in order to try to not be caught. Fine, maybe they will be caught. That doesn't really matter. People aren't thinking of the consequences at the time. If you've got something in the moment in order to stop them or to remind them of these things, then it might actually help to deter them. But hey, that's a Second Amendment argument if ever I've heard one. (laughs) And that's a whole other issue. So, as I say, it gets worse because it's not just the cameras, of course. It is facial recognition. Yes, out of China. Well, of course it is. And how has that been used? Well, they've got their high-tech sunglasses, as we see here, um, where Central China uses sunglasses equipped with facial recognition technology to spot criminal suspects at train stations. On the road, their police have implemented 40 sets of surveillance cameras dubbed Robocops to identify the faces of unruly drivers and regulate traffic. At pedestrian crossings, the the jaywalkers, Chen's it again, would receive an instant notification and a fine as soon as they violate the rules. WeChat, of course. Images and names of people crossing the road against red traffic lights would get projected onto large LED screens to try and use guilt and shame as well, which is, at least according to QI, the most effective way to stop people being late, is shame, not actually the fine. But we know China likes to take it to a whole new level. Concert stadiums as well. Using facial recognition technology as part of security measures, police arrested three fugitives within two months at the concerts of Hong Kong pop singer Jackie Chung in China. In bathrooms, they were outfitted with facial recognition systems to prevent greedy patrons from nabbing extra toilet paper. Yep. (laughs) But it's definitely for your safety. And in classrooms... Use a smart classroom system that monitors students' behavior via facial recognition technology. The cameras installed at the front of each classroom would document the students' attentiveness and even their facial expressions. <laughs> classrooms. Are we talking about re education camps here? Because I think that's where they want to use them. Yeah. But using children, because why not? What dystopic state could possibly continue without using child recruits? Well, here we go. And I do mention that the Health and Safety Board also is allowed to use children, as they say. But as I say, bear in mind, this is predominantly 16, 17-year-olds that they're saying as as children. So let's not not get carried away. But to report on their parents, if they're involved in a a crime ring and it would only be used to try and keep the child safe, but also to, to bring the people to justice, as in, in order to put a big enough case that the child should not be there anymore. That's the point. But, you know, some parents might not like what the government is doing. They might be speaking hate speech, of course, which the child is taught at school that is unacceptable. And then they'd be reporting their parents. I I do vaguely remember this being done in history before, about saying things that are negative about the state. Except, of course, this time it would be about the handling of the coup. Or maybe elections about how democracy is is happening in its very essence. And these things, of course, aren't allowed. As Twitter and Facebook are showing with the suspension of Donald Trump, for example. Okay, yes, we, we had to go there. Facebook banning him outright. Oh, sorry, suspending him indefinitely. There we go. And Twitter suspension for 12 hours. Yeah, and I know the news like to say the walls were closing in from a legal standpoint, which was never accurate. But now the walls are closing in from a social media standpoint. That's definitely accurate. Why didn't they go with that? Oh, because that would have been true. Okay. Okay. So schools of government bodies, the armed forces, and even the gambling regulator will be legally be allowed to use child spies, including against their parents. Police and the security services are among those who will be allowed to use under 18s as covert human intelligence sources under exceptional circumstances, according to official documents. And family is very important. And it seems like 
You're just trying to put suasions against anybody at all. Of course, we were all told that we could all be sick and spreading the coof, even if we haven't got any symptoms, and therefore we are the sickness ourselves, and we have to fear everybody, even if they seem healthy. You can't trust your own family members, even though they have the best of intentions. But, hey, maybe your family members don't have the best of intentions, because they just wish to report you. And they're being actively encouraged to do so. Almost as if they don't really value the family that much at all. No, and instead it should just be state-mandated education, shouldn't it? That's how you get a well-functioning society. We all know where this ends up. Let's not fuck about. But also, to invoke FIFA Vendetta as I am one to do, and I enjoy it, that if you want to know what got us here, you need only look in the mirror. And I am not calling for insurrection based on that. No, not at all. But... I am persuaded quite heavily by Bill Whittle over in America, who says that we have to be the change that we wish to see. It's not good enough to just expect somebody from on high to try and save us from this. Uh, in the States, of course, with the Kraken and Trump and Powell and Pence to do something. And in the UK that we thought, oh, you know, Nigel Farage will hammer it through or uh, maybe Theresa May and then Boris Johnson or Jacob Reese mogg or any of them, or maybe now it's going to be Lawrence Fox, or maybe it's going to be Carl Benjamin, maybe it'll be Mark Collette. But truth be told, of course, it does come down to us as individuals, and we've really got to make it happen and have active participation in it. So I do hear Mark Collette's plea, I really do. And he is trying to do over here a similar thing to what Bill Whittle is trying to do over there with slightly varying politics. But it is vitally important to become a part of the culture of the politics. The left wanted to make everything political and bring in politics into everything, which would be best off avoided. But at this point, that is the new framework. And... You're going to have to beat them at their own game. We're all going to have to beat them at their own game. Which means welcoming the politics in, embracing it, and taking advantage of those opportunities. And taking responsibility ourselves. Not just for ourselves, but for the wider community as well. Participating in elections and reworking things from the ground up. That is what it takes. So, let's keep it going, for our children's sake. But that's it for me, so as always, let me know what you guys think down below. If you think, hmm, no, I got a bit heavy towards the end, maybe that's a bit unrealistic, what can we do? Or if you think, yeah, maybe, maybe this is actually it. It's not ready for violence as a response. No, no, self-defense is always encouraged, but violent retribution is not. So we've got to do something else. Either way, let me know down below. Always intrigued to hear what guys have to say. And as always, until next time, have a good one.